I have an older tutorial on Pro EQ for Studio One, but some things have been changed with the introduction of Pro EQ 2 and version 5 of Studio One. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of those changes in this tutorial. Now, before we get started, if you're someone who's interested in one-on-one -on -one training over Zoom, where I can actually uh, take control of your Studio One application and show you exactly what it is you'd like to learn, I do offer that. You can reach me at the email in the description below. And with that, let's go ahead and get started at taking a look at Pro EQ 2. So Pro EQ 2 is an eight band parametric EQ that can be used on mono or stereo tracks. And we're just gonna start from the top. Let's first bring that in. I'll click on the I to open the inspector. I've got a Pro EQ on this top track. It's a guitar. So I'll double click here. Let's close the inspector. And again, we'll start from the top and make our way down. We first have a button for band controls, and this is gonna show or hide the band controls down at the bottom in case we'd only like to make use of the spectrum metering display. So just by clicking once, we can hide those. Now to the right of that, we have a level range drop-down menu here. Now this is going to affect the vertical display or the vertical scale of our spectrum display. At the default setting of 24 dB, we can see a broad overview of our adjustments and make extreme adjustments in this setting. But if we'd like more precise control over level changes, we can always change to one of the other settings. So we can change this to 12 dB or 6 dB and make a large adjustment here. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if I adjust, the low mid frequency and take that all the way up to the top. And then let's come back to our default 24. You can see that this is actually a small adjustment, relatively speaking, when we're in this 24 dB scale. So again, kind of the general rule with EQ is that you don't want to make too large of adjustments. So if you would prefer to have a view where you can really hone in on what you're doing and adjust more precisely, then you can switch to one of these two other settings, the 6 dB or 12. You could kind of think of these other settings as kind of a zoom function where you can zoom in vert vertically in the display. And I'm gonna change that back to the 12 dB and let me control click to take that gain back to the default. And to the right of the range, we have curves. This is going to be active by default, and while active, it will show all curves for each frequency band handle. As you can see, when I make adjustments here, we can see that we have discrete colors to represent each band, and we also have the curves, the colored curves, that are displayed. Now, if we were to deactivate curves, then we're just gonna have this one general line that represents all of our adjustments together. Now, if we do hover or make an adjustment here using the handle or using the control below, the uh, color and the individual line will show up for that adjustment or while you're hovering and then go away. To reactivate, just click once, and we can see we now have our discrete lines or curves and colors. Let's take these back to the defaults again by control clicking. And then next we have a drop down menu for selecting our spectrum display type. So by default, this is gonna be set to the 12th octave. Let me go ahead and play back this guitar part that we have here so we can see this as the signal is passing through. So again, by default, we'll be on 12th octave. We can choose FFT curve, waterfall, and third octave. And these can be useful tools to help you locate frequencies that maybe your ears have gotten used to, but if you would like to take these off and just use your ears, which is always the best place to start, uh, you can switch this to none. And there will be no display. So let's take this back to the default of 12. 
And what do we have next? The uh, this snowflake, the freeze button. This is going to specifically ap apply to signals coming into the side chain. So let's first take a look at that. And our side chain can be found up at the top. So notice that this is in 12th octave, but as soon as I click on side chain, it changes to FFT curve because if the side chain is active, then this is the only setting FFT uh, that it will work with. So now that we have that activated, we have the arrow that we can click on and choose sources, a source or multiple sources to come into our Pro EQ. Here I have a presence that's playing a piano part. So I have that available as a source, as we can see when I click. So I will select that. And let's go ahead and play back. And I need to unmute the presence. Okay, so now we can see activity for our side chain signal. And coming back, we now see that the freeze button is active and we can click that to freeze the incoming signal and it's going to freeze on the highest peaks. So after the highest peaks have been played back, it's going to remain frozen on that until we click again to take this off. All right. And so with that function, we can kind of see what's going on with the frequency content of two different sources or multiple sources at one time within our display here. Coming back all the way up to the top, actually let's take the side chain off because we don't need that anymore. But in the top right corner, we have high quality. This is active by default, and this will provide you with more accurate equalization by using two times oversampling. Just keep in mind that this will use more processing power. And bordering each side of our display, we have level meters, one for our input and another for our output. Now these meters do have peak and RMS displays, so the horizontal white lines is gonna show the RMS. The others is the uh, peak. And below our output meter, we have gain control for the output and an auto button. And the auto button is going to engage auto gain so that Pro EQ will automatically adjust the output level to match that of the incoming level after you've made adjustments to the gain uh, within the bands down below. Moving on, in the upper left hand corner of our band control display, we have LLC here. This is a phase linear low cut filter, and I'm not going to go too much into depth on this feature because it is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but just know that it will tax your processor uh, pretty intensely when it is engaged. And this is a low cut filter, and you can choose where you'd like the cut to be made, whether 20 hertz, 50, or 80. And if you're not familiar with phase linear filtering, you can always just experiment with this between this one and the regular low cut below and just use your ears to uh, decide which one you think sounds better for the audio content that you're working with. Now, if we go ahead and engage the LLC here, by default, we can see there's a cut being made here because we're on 20 hertz. We can change that to 50 or 80, as I mentioned. We also have a soft button. So by default, when we activate the LLC, there's going to be a 24 dB slope, but by activating the soft button, this is going to introduce a 12 dB slope. So that's what that's gonna be used for. But for now, let's take that off. All right, so we are nearing the end here. And at the bottom, we have familiar EQ controls. We have low cut and high cut, low frequency, low mid frequency, mid frequency, high mid frequency, and high frequency band controls. We can activate any of these bands by clicking on this button or lead here next to its name, or by clicking on the corresponding handle up above in our display. Our low cut and high cut 
bands have option for the filter slope. And this is going to be between 6 dB and 48 dB. Our low frequency and high frequency bands have drop down menus where we can choose peaking here or several different types of shelves. So if I go ahead, let's start with the peaking. And if I make an adjustment to that, we can see we've got our peak control. Now, if I change this to the shelf, and I'm just briefly showing this for anyone who is new to working with EQ. Uh, so our shelf at 6 dB, then we have 12. This is just gonna get a bit more aggressive as we go up and 24. So let's take that back to the default of 6 dB, I believe. Now the remaining controls can be found on each of the different bands. So our gain, our Q, and our frequency. And as you've seen, we can just click hold and drag to adjust any of these parameters. We can also use the handles up above to make adjustments. If you'd like to make more fine adjustments, then just hold down your shift key and then you can adjust this in a more precise way. We've seen we can control click to take these back to the default. And also note that for our Q, which is gonna adjust the uh, range of our band that's being affected, we can click and hold and drag up and down. We can also hover on the handle and use the mouse wheel to make adjustments. We can actually get pretty surgical with these. Say if we have some unwanted artifacts that we want to find, sometimes it's a good idea to raise the gain up and then search through the frequency to find those artifacts or sounds that we'd like to remove. And then once we've found it, we can take the gain down to pull it out. Now we can also click once in these fields to enter values. I'll put zero or let's put five. Let's put three here. So again, just clicking once and manually entering in a value. And so that pretty much co covers all of the parameters within the new Pro EQ 2. And so just I'll finish out the last 60 seconds or so, just making some adjustments to the guitar track. Uh, so we can give a listen to some of these different bands and how they affect our guitar. All right, thanks for watching.